divine essence that is your life, my life, all of life. My name is Ron Tobias. I am deeply grateful to be a licensed practitioner here at the center. Holmes Institute ministerial student, I continue to remind you, hold me in that prayer two more years. Two more years. <laughs> Finding rest, renewal, and delight in our busy lives. This is the correct cover. Do not look at the PowerPoint, <laughs> except for the date of the book club. But we're going to talk about the Sabbath, because we're going to go from Zoom, Zoom, our busy lives, our active lives, oh, our iPhones and Androids and iPads and this, to rest and renewal. So I just invite you to open your mind, open your heart, add your love, add your light. Let's just all know that we're beautiful friends here together. Journey.
the vitality and the joy of God. That's what I'm talking about. Good morning. How are you?
that we're tired, we're overwhelmed, we're overworked, what is the universal law going to give us? Very good. So Wayne Muller is calling us because we are entering a state of emergency. In all seriousness, we are entering a state of emergency. Roshi Joan Halifax, a new Pia Zen Center, a very prolific author, teacher, just powerful, humble woman, talks about edge states. She talks about there's six edge states, and we're not going to go into them today, but she talks about that we are in a state of overstimulation for our nervous system. We are trying to endure minutes, hours, days of activities. Our bodies physically cannot handle it. We have to come to the awareness that this is the divine body temple. That this is the sacred place from which spirit experiences and expresses itself as and through us. We must come to a place of reverence. And so Reverend, uh, I mean, a grocery store topic talks about recharging and relaxing. She says it's not enough to have a cup of tea. And it's not enough just to take a nap. We must go into that deep stillness. We must take time to recharge and replenish. I took that picture in Colorado. I mean, to stand in there in front of the mountain. When was the last time you took a vacation? When was the last time you took a day off because you wanted to play? And you did it without being sick? Our bodies will physically, physically collapse and will tell us you need time off. What Wayne is saying and what I am reinforcing is that we get to choose how we experience our lives, and we must take that time consciously choosing to renew, to refresh. Otherwise, our body will collapse. It says here that 43% of adults have adverse health effects from stress. 75 to 90% uh, go to the doctor's office with complaints related to stress. OSHA says stress in the workplace costs us 300 billions of dollars, and it costs 50% of people to have emotional disorders. And you know what? It's just overwhelming. We are pushing ourselves beyond our edges in a way that we are actually not being productive. I worked in the film industry for many years, and we would have 12 to 16 hour days. And what I noticed is after 10 hours, the productivity was going down, 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 down. People were exhausted. Things were going slower. Why don't we just like take a break, go home, and rest? We're being called to go from the ER to the HR, which is holy rest. We're being called to spend time with ourselves. We're being called to take naps, to take walks, to make love, to go play, to go dance, to know that the promised land is here now. We are being called to HR because there's too many of us that are ending up in the ER. You're entitled by your divine inheritance and the very nature of your beingness to be in the stillness, to be in the play, to be in the joy of being. And when we take that time for renewal, we actually come to our jobs refreshed. We come with greater kindness. Have you noticed people who get a lot of sleep are really nice most of the time? <laughs> I'm a little itchy when I haven't had a lot of sleep. I get a little prickly, and I realize that I'm missing out on the holy rest. So my partner, Hope, and I would say he went to Colorado, and I needed that thing. It was a gift from the universe for me. I got invited to speak at Twin River Center for Spiritual Living in Grand Junction. It was fabulous, the practitioner retreat, had a great time, saw the monument there, and then we went to Breckenridge. And I won't tell you who gifted this to me, but it was someone in my class because I was telling them, I go, look, we're going to Colorado. I haven't been on vacation in four years. You know, this is my budget. And he goes, well, let me check my family's uh, condo because we have a condo in Breckenridge. I would love for you to use it. He goes, but it's usually booked. So he looks on his iPhone and he goes, girl. He goes, you must, he goes, you must be living right. He goes, if only four days available, like four days you're there. Cha-ching. Yes. The universe conspires for our good if we're willing to say yes. I needed that. Because I've got ministerial school, I've got a partner, I've got work here, I've got my family. You can just feel it. I was so stressed. I, could, I feel it in the heaviness in my heart. Now, they talk in the book about a Chinese symbol for busy, um, and they said it's the two characters, uh, hard and killing. But then I, I researched online, and a Chinese scholar said that really wasn't true, so I'm not sure. 
He said, busyness is the overwhelm. But for me, when I don't have that sacred space and that sacred silence, and I get a little prickly, I feel it in my heart. And for us to stop and rest and renew is actually coming from an open heart space. Our heart attention then is allowed to be part and participating in spiritual matters. See, the Sabbath was about not working. It's not about having time for your to-do list and the errands that you need to do and calling mom and calling dad and doing this and doing that. Let me check my emails. No. It's an empty. And we must, he says, get back to the rhythm of nature because we force the rhythm of work and rest. It is good to be in the world sharing our gifts. It is good to be in the world receiving you know, compensation for that. It's good to have this dance and this exchange. But without the rest, we're so tired that we're actually not completely showing up. We're coming with the glass half empty because we're depleted. I found myself just always, you know, just it's like, I can feel this, like I do this, like I do that. And thank God I have a partner who will say, stop. Stop. Now, the way I used to, and I need to renew this in myself, I used to go to White Rock Lake for an hour minimum to be in silence. There's something about nature that wraps her arms around us. And the birds and the sparrows and the eagle, they sing to us. And the trees clap when they see us. When I was in Colorado, the spring took my sorrows and stress. I allowed myself to move into the sacred space, opening, receiving, emptying to the to-do list. But the sacred silence for me recharges me. I have to have it. And if I deny myself that, then I'm denying each one of you, my beloved friends, my beloved family, for me to show up in my fullness and my wholeness and my joy. Now, not that I'm always crowded, right, honey? <laughs> 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 but I notice that up to this vacation, we were exhausted. But once we got to Breckenridge, besides just being 46 degrees and then maybe 74 high, there was a path behind that I got up early a couple times to go walk. And then we walked as a family. But I needed to be in that space. I found a place where someone created an altar. And I found a rock, and that became my meditation cushion. And I sat there and wrote poetry. I was going to write one and share it today, but I didn't have time, and I didn't pressure myself to do so. <laughs> so I was resting on my back. <laughs> and in that stillness, the birds literally danced for me. And the wind was blowing, and the aspen, I could, seriously, I could hear them clapping. And I could hear the river with her grace and that holy yes saying, Sweet child, give it to me. And then this little hummingbird came. And I got it on film. I'm not going to show it to you today, but I'll show it. And it zoom, 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 zoom. And I was like, Whoop, whoop. And I just, just watch it. <laughs> I got this, I got that, I got that. How often do we have our iPhone 
sounds attached to us, that instead of listening to the sounds of nature who are whispering to us and teaching us the forest sutra, the sky sutra, the lake sutra, that reminds us that God is present in the moment, how often do we not hear it because we got our iPhones in our ear, or our Androids, we got the iPads going. In Colorado, we found this great theater, and the, the symphony was practicing. And, and Hope and Zayn went in there, we were enjoying it, we were loving it. And I looked to my right, and there was an older couple sitting there, but they were both on their phones. And I always said, put it down, you know? <laughs> Be present. Be present. Give yourself that gift. It will renew you. We must get back to the rhythm of life. He says in the Sabbath. I read this book a long time ago, and it's just been like a great uh, opportunity to remember. He says we must have a period, just like in nature, because if you notice in nature, there must, must be winter, that dormancy, the lying fallow, as they call it. We go from winter to the promise of spring is in winter, and then spring arises and the joy of being and, and life is just luscious. And then we go into the fruitful harvest of summer, and then all of a sudden things start descending to move into that stillness which is fall. But winter is the place from which the dormancy, wisdom arises. And he's saying that we must get into that place of dormancy. We must have a period in which we lie fallow and restore our souls. In Sabbath time, we remember to celebrate what is beautiful and sacred. We light candles, sing songs, tell stories, eat, nap, and make love. It is time to let our work, our land, our animals lie fallow to be nourished and refreshed. Within this sanctuary, we become available to the insights and blessings of deep mindfulness that arises only in stillness, only in quiet. Because he says if busyness becomes a kind of violence, we don't stretch our perception of the Sabbath, we're not allowing ourselves to heal. It's an invitation to be restored. It's an invitation to be replenished. It's an invitation to actually allow yourself to move into the emptiness. And people are afraid of that. They're afraid to be in the quiet. They don't want to hear their own thoughts. Trust me, I have a very creative mind. And before I started meditation, my mind would make up stories of all, you know, lengths and, and textures. But we don't go into the silence because we're afraid that what we're going to find is not good. You see, we must remember that in Genesis, when the heavens and the earth were created, and God called it good, each time, Something was made manifest, divine experience and expressed itself, and the Bible says, and it was good. And it was good. And here come the animals, it was good. Here come the plants and trees, it was good. Here come the skies and ocean, it was good. When's the last time you said that? When is the last time that we woke up and said, it is good. Life is good. When is the last time you woke up refreshed, renewed, excited about the day? It is Good. God, experience and express itself is all of life. It is good, but we get overwhelmed. We forget. And see, to me, that forgetting, that's the fall in the garden, the amnesia. We forget that God is present everywhere, every moment, as and through us. We forget to take time to connect to that divine source, remember who we are, the essence of our being, the life that we are. And when we take that time to renew, and we take that time to recharge, because trust me, every night my Android is plugged into the wall. It needs to be recharged so it's working. <laughs> All right? Computer's on, computer's resting. Why do we not have reverence for our body temple? The indwelling presence that is God is here now. The indwelling presence that is God is here now. Be renewed. Invite yourself to make space and to make time. So when you go through this book, and I really do invite you, it is a fabulous book. He has simple practices. Now, Wayne says you can have a few minutes, a few hours, a few days. You don't have to go to retreat. You don't have to leave your job. But really, if it's not feeding you, that's another, that's another service. But what he's saying is, 
make time. So when we begin the service, we always begin with this. You know what we're doing? We're not telling the music team to get on stage. <laughs> We're not telling the greeters, hey, you got to get people seated. <laughs> We're consecrating our time together. We're coming together in God. Dwayne, in his book, has amazing simple practices. He says we can light a candle. When they begin Shabbat, I think it's two candles on Friday evening before sunset. Now, I'm not Jewish, and I apologize to anybody, but there's this reference. If something happens, or we simply pause, we simply light the candle, and we invite ourselves into a space. Stillness. It says, read a poem, write a poem, play, dance. We must create the time and the space. Our excuses of not being able to are actually destroying us from the inside out. So I'm going to invite you to take your shoes off. Take a little huh? So for spiritual living hours, we believe in your and the opposite. And I invite you to open your hearts and your minds. Now use your imagination. I want you to smell the pine trees. I want you to feel 46 degrees. I want you to hear the laughter and the joy of the birds. Because the first part of this experience are photographs and silence. And then we're going to move into just listening to the river. And when the river comes in all her amazing ways, empty yourself. Offer her your sorrows. Offer her your overwhelm. Offer her your stress. Empty yourself.
breathe in and we breathe out, and the invitation becomes that as we allow ourselves to rest, we allow ourselves to renew, we give ourselves permission to have this sacred time and space. We then step back from the zoom, 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 and we can see God, the persistent luminosity that Wayne Mueller talks about. We can see the wholeness of the divine experience and expressing itself. Thomas Merton calls it the hidden wholeness. Just like this beautiful moon in Breckenridge, we are illuminated. And we are able then to share that light into the world. And we become the kind, beneficial, powerful presence. So one last thing that I would like for you to experience is the practice of blessing. As Wayne said before the Shabbat, what the parents do, they bless their children. They put their hands above their head and they bless them. So I'm going to invite Gary up here. And so here's the invitation. Pair up with somebody. And what you're going to do is you're going to bless that person. You're going to say, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be at peace. And then you're going to turn around and you're going to receive that. And then I'm going to continue to tell you to do it till I give you the cue to come back. So stand up, partner up with somebody. The Lord's up here. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. <laughs> may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. Make sure you switch partners when you're done. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. May you be happy. Happy. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. Find another partner. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. May you be happy. Expressions 
that is standing before me, all of life, everything seen and unseen, the beautiful pine trees in Colorado, the aspens who sang my name, the river who took all of our worries and transmuted them to wisdom. We are the one expressing so eloquently, so magnificently, God as and through us. And the invitation is to bring back the sacred, in the stillness, in the song, in the dance, in the art, in the beingness. Heart wide open to receive, emptying our minds of any to-do list, any worries, any concerns, and giving ourselves permission to be in the space of renewal, to restore our souls to the vibrancy that is our divine essence. So I breathe into the sacredness of this moment, recognizing that spirit is fully orbed and fully present as and through us, grateful for the reminder to remember the Sabbath, to renew our minds, to recharge our bodies, to be in that divine experience and expression that is God, always God, and only God, to stand in the presence of beauty that is our life, all of life, to watch the rhythmic dance of nature that reminds us the wisdom in the dormancy. To lie low, to hang out, to be still, to have our God groove in our unique and magnificent way, and to be refreshed, replenished, so that our persistent luminosity shines out in the world, that our smile and our eyes radiate the light of 10,000 suns, that our heart sings the songs of the cosmic symphony that is the constellations, and to know that this is God, always God, only God, God, sacred. So it's in this reverence from which I speak this for. It's in the deepest gratitude that I know this truth. The deepest compassion for those that we illuminate this truth of the inner stillness, the outer dance. And so I call this all so beautiful. Grateful for the river, grateful for the moon, grateful for the shooting stars, grateful for each one here, grateful for the opportunity to say yes to less. And so we breathe into the space, we drink of this divine, we call it so beautiful, and I call it absolutely perfect and complete. And we affirm, we accept, we allow, we say the holy sacred yes together by saying so it is.